Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT University, a one-stop shop to learn all the technologies. At this time we are talking about uh, setting up a uh, single node uh, um, cluster on Cloudera uh, to have a lab for practicing Hadoop and Spark uh, from developer point of view. So uh, for that uh, you need to have brief knowledge about AWS. Um, AWS have fixed costs and variable costs and also you have to understand uh, several important concepts. Uh, so before actually uh, getting into uh, directly setting up uh, the single node VM, I will highly recommend you to watch a playlist on Amazon Web Services on my channel. I will provide the link as annotation um, as part of this video also. So this is the playlist which you need to look into. You have to start from intro introduction to, uh, to provisioning EC2 instance. Um, uh, up to that you have to understand and also uh, yeah for single node VM that is more than enough you have to watch all these videos introduction sign up and regions key networking uh, key pair pricing and then um, uh, provisioning EC2 instance okay so once you go through those uh, videos in that playlist you can launch um, aws.amazon.com and go to the AWS web console by clicking on sign into the console and then you can click on EC2 and launch instance. Here we are setting up a single node VM uh, so we have to provision CentOS based EC2 instance not Red Hat it, CentOS is a little bit cheaper it saves you 5 cents per hour so I will recommend you to go with CentOS. Uh, and I will recommend you to use uh, uh, this AMI. AMI means Amazon Machine Image. It is similar to a template, so you will uh, you will be able to uh, provision an instance uh, with uh, pre-installed softwares that are required uh, to uh, to set up uh, uh, to set up any uh, any application on top of it. So we'll be provisioning uh, this AMI, which comes with CentOS uh, six six point five. And then uh, we will deploy prerequisites on top of it and then we will actually set up the cluster. Okay, so use this AMI and go to AWS Marketplace, search for that AMI. I think it's under Community AMIs. Search for that AMI and uh, select this one. When you actually try to search for it, if the AMI does, uh, does not have para virtual virtualization type, uh, then you might run into some issues. So whatever CentOS 6.x you choose, make sure the virtualization type is para virtual. Click on select. And here we need to have at least 15 to 16 GB memory. So this is the one which we will be using M3.x large which have 4 cores and 15 uh, GB RAM or you can also go with this one C3 to 2x large. C3.2x large for the pricing purpose search for EC2 pricing ok I will recommend uh, C3.2x uh, large because it has 8 cores and 15 GB RAM uh, this one have only 4 cores M3.x large so it might be it might not be sufficient enough because we will be having many uh, Cloudera based tools or Hadoop, uh, Hadoop based tools running using Cloudera on, on this uh, machine so better to give at least 8 cores rather than 4 cores so I will try I will prefer C3 to dot, uh, to dot, to x, uh, C3 dot to x large but you can start with M3 dot x large and if you are not happy with the performance you can uh, increase the capacity uh, without uh, rebuilding it so you just have to stop the instance and change the instance type and then you can actually increase the capacity I will show that. So I will start with M3.x large and uh, later I will show how to actually increase the capacity so that you, you have knowledge about uh, that and you, you cut down the costs um, by following uh, these steps. Okay. So use this URL. First we will search pricing for M3.x large. So we are not uh, using any uh, any instance with upfront cost. So 
sam3.xlarge uh, it costs you around uh, 19 cents per hour okay if you have it for the whole month you will be sorry it's not uh, this one uh, actually if you get into contract then these are the prices with the zero upfront cost uh, we are actually using on demand so it is 26 cents 26.6 cents which is around 27 cents per hour this is the variable cost and also there are fixed costs associated with it based upon the amount of storage you provision uh, uh, so if you provision 50 50 gigabytes of storage you have to pay approximately 5 giga uh, 5 dollars per month so if you run 100 hours with this you will be paying 26.6 dollars for the server and then uh, approximately 5 dollars for the storage and then you might have to get the public IP which which might be another five dollars per month so approximately 35 to 40 dollars you will have your own environment uh, to practice for 100 hours if you practice for 200 hours the cost will almost double so make sure you stop the instance whenever it is not required when you are using AWS otherwise you will pay a lot of money okay so if you go with m3.x large this is the cost if we go with c4.2x large so this is the one which uh, which i highly recommend uh, because of the capacity that is required uh, we need to have at least 8 uh, cpus and 15 uh, gb ram so we have to go to c3.2x large if you see it is 42 cents per hour okay and let me see c4.2x large also uh, c4 c4 is not uh, supported for this environment so we can we have to use c3.2x large only okay so c3.2x large costs us 42 cents per hour so if you use this one you will be paying approximately fifty dollars per month uh, if you keep it up and running for 100 hours if you go with the previous one it will be around uh, 35 dollars with this it will be 50 dollars okay so uh, first we will start with m3 dot x large okay and then configure instance details here we will be using VPC. What is VPC and all? You can uh, uh, you have to watch those Amazon Web Services videos before getting into here. And then next we have to add storage. By default, it only gives 8 GB. Instead of adding new volume, we will be increasing this one. So I will be I will recommend at least to have 50 GB uh, so that you have enough storage for OS, for Hadoop, and everything. Okay. And then uh, tag instance cdh lab this is the name i will give single node next configure security group so in this case uh, i will be using uh, existing security group okay where all the ports are open uh, for everyone uh, it is uh, not very safe in most of the scenarios but for uh, our purpose which uh, security is not a major constraint we need to open up uh, all the ports so this one is existing security group again to understand what is security group and how it needs to configure you have to go through the videos uh, you have even if you choose to have a new security group like this create a new security group you have to add rules and make sure all tcp uh, uh, tcp ports from 0 to 65535 are open like this so you have to add all tcp and source should be anywhere similarly to ping you have to open up icmp protocol also from anywhere okay and then review and launch okay here uh, i have to choose the security group i will be using uh, this one which i already have or i will be using this one Yeah, I will be using this one, okay? So all TCP is opened, all ICMP is opened from anywhere. And then review and launch. Uh, that's fine, you just click on next. And now you can click on launch. 
you have to use a uh, key pair either you can use uh, you can pre create the key pair and use the existing one or you can uh, create a new key pair by choosing this one but if you choose to create a new key pair you have to download a pem file immediately and save it into a particular location and make sure it has permissions 400 on it as well as the directory which have it so in this case i will be using cdh 54 for which i already have downloaded the pem file into the location dot ec2 in my home directory and here you can see the pem file and you can see the permissions are uh, only uh, read and write uh, for the owner for others and group there are no permissions on this file not only that one you also have to uh, limit the permissions on the directory also the directory also should have only uh, read write execute permissions to owner others and group should not have any permissions on the directory also so you have to first uh, uh, once you copy the key pair to a particular directory make sure you create a new directory for it and then run chmod700 on the directory uh, directory and go to the directory and then run chmod400 on the pem file which is cdh54.pem in, in my case okay so the permissions are very very important otherwise you will not be able to connect to the uh, server and then click on launch instances it will create uh, this m2.x uh, uh, x large instance with uh, uh, 4 cores and 15 gb ram uh, with centos 6.5 for you using which we will set up prerequisites uh, such as setting up mysql database and also we will be making some kernel level changes and then uh, we will actually uh, start setting up the single node cluster using cloudera distribution going forward you can follow these steps not only for cloudera distribution for anything okay so in future i might create uh, other playlists to create the lab i might show this as the uh, uh, example for other distributions also but down the line you might see different names when actually uh, uh, perform uh, tasks relevant to that topic okay so for anything you have to follow the same things uh, sa same steps first you have to provision the instance set up the prerequisites set up the software you want to uh, explore and then start exploring it okay so that being said now this uh, server is still uh, coming up okay once it comes up we can use this public ip and connect um, uh, uh, connect to uh, the ec2 instance which is provisioned from aws uh, but this public ip will be changing whenever you stop and start the server okay uh, these are called as dynamic public ips uh, for to address that issue you have to create a elastic ip so that you can make an, uh, it static so that you don't need to worry about uh, changing ip address every time you try to log into this uh, lab okay so first we will create a elastic ip allocate new address yes allocate close once it is created select this one that one actions associate address and here choose this one whichever is running now uh, uh, cdh lab signal node I, I i am trying to map this elastic ip or elastic public dns uh, uh, for the uh, single node cluster which we are going to set up so this is the elastic ip and elastic dns will start with ec2 hyphen 52 hyphen 86 hyphen so whatever is used here it will be resolved into elastic public dns also so if you look go to instances now and this is the one which we are talking about now you can see that it has the uh, elastic ip associated with it and the dns is derived from ip you can see that 52.86.110.32 is resolved into or derived into ec2-52-86-110-32 then it has uh, uh, several other things also so we can choose this uh, compute-1.amazonaws.com okay now we can take this public dns after elastic ip is mapped to it and then you can run ssh minus i 
dot ec2 slash cdh 54 dot pem so hyphen i needs the uh, parameter uh, of uh, our pem file or public ip uh, sorry public uh, uh, key sorry private key which which can be used to connect to the cluster so here we are passing the key so that we can connect to the cluster uh, or instance on aws okay once you pass that now you can give the user using which you want to connect to get the username choose the uh, host which you want to connect to and click on connect and it will give the username in this case the username is root and the pem file name is cdh54.pem because that is the key pair which i have used here it will be better to give the fully qualified path rather than relative path like this okay so this is the fully qualified path tilde stands for home directory slash dot ec2 is the directory which have my pem file and i am using that complete path and now use this public dns paste it here and hit enter now you will be logging into the host uh, as root and you can perform whatever you want on this so you can you, you can uh, use red hat 6.5 or centos 6.5 or whatever os you want to use there will be some subtle differences which you need to understand and then you will be able to uh, uh, proceed further uh, to set up whatever uh, uh, technology you want uh, lab for you can follow the similar steps if you use red hat the username will be ec2 hyphen user if you use ubuntu the typical username will be ubuntu okay uh, so but for this purpose i will recommend to go with centos which will, uh, will facilitate you to log in as root if not centos use red hat 6.x uh, and uh, from here uh, the steps will be similar uh, except the os user if you are using red hat instead of centos that being said for now that is it we will see how we can leverage this to set up lab for our purpose to explore a new technology um, I, I hope you are enjoying the content if you like this video um, or if you want to provide the feedback please do uh, like it and comment uh, provide the comment in the comment section and uh, if you want to uh, if you want to discuss further about uh, the certifications and big data Please do join my LinkedIn groups so that we, you, uh, if you run into any issues, I can troubleshoot and uh, come up uh, with the solution. Or you can also, uh, uh, I will be uploading this course in Udemy. You can uh, post the questions in Udemy also and I will try to come up with solutions for you. That being said, thank you. Bye.